Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for this spring look featuring this Dior palette. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. So for those of you who've been here, you know that this is the second palette from the collection that I'm trying. It's in 643 Pure Petals, but this was the peachier of the two, a little bit brighter, and so this actually inspired me to paint my nails today. I hardly ever paint my nails because I wash my hands so much that they just don't last, but I thought let's do something spring-like today and a little bit more vibrant. And if you did tune into the first video, you know I struggled with that palette. I was hardly able to get any of the color off the pan, and I think just using brushes in general didn't work with that palette, so I was bound and determined to figure out a way to use this one. <laughs> and I think I figured out some ways to make the most of this palette in case you really, really wanted to pick it up. slow down here today because I really feel like with this more sheer formula, actually all around this whole collection has been sheer, I'm going to try to do my version of glass skin. <laughs> As you can see, my skin is not perfect. I think that transparent feels a little trickier when you have to actually correct so much. So we're gonna go in though with the Shantikai Radiance Elixir. Just place that all over the skin. It has some iridescence about it, just a very, very subtle iridescence about it. Now this does double duty because it is a skincare item. I wanted something radiant, but also with a little bit more substantial coverage. So I picked the Clay de Peau Radiant Fluid Matte Foundation, as well as we're gonna mix in some of the Clay de Peau Radiant Fluid Foundation. Now I actually have two different shades here. So 030 for the Radiant Matte and 040 for the Radiant Fluid Foundation. We're also going to mix in some more of the Radiance Elixir. I'm gonna do about half and half. You can see the difference in the shades as well. And then add that Elixir. This might be too much foundation. We might not use all of it. So we're just gonna add that combination right in the center of the face for now and really try not to add so much on the exterior. I do like to go lighter my foundation. It, it's easier for me to correct on the exterior to bring it back to the natural color. Um, but again, my center of my face is lighter than the rest of my face. Gonna go in with my favorite concealers. We've got the Sizzly and the La Prairie. La Prairie. <laughs> and I think this helps with a more natural looking complexion because I don't powder these. They actually look better without powdering. They don't require powdering either, at least for me. And that is one of the main reasons I feel like this concealer is worth the money. It is more expensive, but the result is incomparable. La Prairie also has the same performance, does not require powder, looks better without powder, but their shade range is even more limited than Sizzly. So that might be another factor in terms of if you wanna try either one. Taking Clay de Peau Mocha and just going to put that in the outer corner and then anywhere where there's extra discoloration. So outer corners, and I'll go in and add to the outer corner again later. And then let's go ahead and add just right here. It's more intense concealing, but very, very specific areas. I've learned over the years just to spot conceal and really go light with foundation everywhere else. I do want this to look as much like skin as possible. I'm gonna go in and powder with one of my lightest weight powders. This is the Clay de Peau Loose Powder. They really do complexion products really, really well. I'm just gonna add my primer first for my eyes and let that set. The Hourglass Primer. Then I thought for a little bit of warmth and a little bit of glow. I have been pulling for this one. So yeah, I just have to be really careful about how much I put up here because if I put too much, I'm going to get that texture. But this is a half that has the powder and this is a half that does not have the powder. It's again, the Le Beige Healthy Glow Luminous Color by Chanel. Okay, so let's stop there for now. We're gonna go in with a bronzer, just really light bronzer. We're gonna go in with the Sizzly and we're just going to really lightly bronze. But this has a bit of a sheen to it, so I thought it would be pretty with this. That's what I like about this one. You can build it up, you can go really light with it. Just to illuminate just a little bit more, I thought we would go in with the Face Powder by Shantikai, this one that has the gold flecks on it. 
definitely has some luminosity to it. So I'm going to keep it away from the center of my face, but just kind of go on the perimeter. You can see the very subtle glow there. I'm gonna go in with brows and go actually more straight across. My brows like to go more straight across. So we're gonna try that today. Maybe go a little bit lighter. We'll see how it goes. Let's finally get to the eyes. Now, what I learned from the other one, I'm going to try to adjust my application. So this one is a little bit brighter. Again, 643, I'm going to take this lightest shade. I'm just going to apply it to my eyelid using my finger here. I feel like I can control the intensity a little bit better here rather than with the brush. And this is really vibrant peach. I think it's a really, unique color. I do like the freshness of this color, but I think you have to like this shade. Again, knowing that this is going to be sheer, I'm just kind of trying to think of it that way and make the most of the sheer quality of this. Now, one thing I did notice about these, and I think I said it in the other one, is that these go on really evenly. And I know one of you mentioned that someone you watched use the sponge on the deeper shade. I'm gonna do that today. I thought that was such a good idea. I don't usually hold on to these. So after I read that, I thought, let me try this with the sponge. And you can definitely see this color here so much better. And I've gotta try this sponge with the other one using this applicator. These are quite different though, yes, than the current Dior products that I've been trying out. The buildup is quite slow, but also quite beautiful in the way that these colors meld together. And just using my fingertips to kind of blend everything together. Not an easy product to use, but I think if you're looking for this particular aesthetic, then I think the result is pretty. And then we're going to take this lightest color. I'll just do one eye for now and then we'll catch up. Um, and I'm going to take the gold with the same sponge and just place it here. I'm taking that lighter pink shade and I'm just blending this. I'm just gonna take Earth and Tight Line. Oh, I forgot, did I mention what I went in with my brows? Sorry, I went in with the Wonder Brow as usual, uh, the Dior Pencil and the Dior Pump and Brow, and it was the same as usual. I just actually though brushed my brows down right here. That's kind of what they naturally want to do. So I've been kind of playing around with that a little bit instead of trying to force them to go up. Um, but that is the look just with tight lining. Just gonna add a little bit of mocha to the corners of my eye just to fix that area. And that gold does have some fallout. I'm just seeing it on my nose now. <laughs> um, also, it went down a little too far, so I'm just gonna take my concealer brush, see what I can do to fix that. I think that blended really beautifully though. Pulled a couple of blushes. I pulled this one, Rose Petal by Chanel. I also pulled the Coral Backstage by Dior. And I also pulled, this made me think of the Suku blush, this one right here. I thought this actually looks a lot like this eye. So let's go in with the Chanel blush first. This one's the least shimmery of all, so that's why I'm starting with this one. Okay, let's take the Suku. I'm just running my brush through um, all of the shades in there. I'm gonna build this right under the outside of my eye. And I'm going to put most of it right there. Okay, and then let's take that Dior blush, this one. And let's just, I do not like this mirror. I don't know why I'm always surprised at it. It's so fuzzy. I just wanted to pull some of that Sherbert kind of brightness into the blush. With a little bit of that Chanel Healthy Glow powder. Then we're gonna go in with this now. So last time I used this by itself, you could barely see anything on me. So I'm going to go in as a highlighter. So here it is. I'm just gonna tap it onto my cheek, just the top part of my cheek. Definitely looks like there's a flush to my cheeks today. I kind of put it in a bigger area than I normally do. Let's go ahead with lip. The last time I used the lipstick, this one, it was a little bit cool for me, also a little bit sheer, and I wanted to go in with something that I thought would work better, but we will use that on top of this one. So Hermes number 21. It has that warmth to it that I just don't get from a lot of lipsticks, most lipsticks. So I thought we'd try this. 
Oh wait, just kidding. I forgot, I wanted to go in with the Chantecai Contour Fill because I just wanna see what this can do. I did use this in a different video, but I wanna see it with different lipsticks. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, lipstick just glides on really nicely with that on. So here's uh, the Hermes lipstick, but let's go in with the Dior on top. I liked the finish of this, but not necessarily the shade or the sheerness of it. It's a light layer. I think that cools it down just a hair. I thought we could just go on top and see what happens. If you do like that no mascara look, then this is where it would be, but I, of course, going to add some mascara, but I will use the Ilia again because I think this does such a nice job of a natural lash look. So we're gonna put one coat on. So I just tucked my hair back. It just felt like that was more spring-like, but this is one coat of mascara, just tight lining, really keeping it simple and really soft with the eye. So this is just with a light wash of color, but you can see they blended really nicely into each other. So again, that ombre effect. I think you get more of a contrast with this one versus the other palette, which I think was more monochromatic, but that may have been because I didn't use that sponge applicator either. You can definitely see more dimension with this one. Let's go ahead and intensify. I'm just gonna take Jasper above. It's not a very intense eyeliner. It has some shimmer to it. Very nice warm brown color. Then let's take this brush and just extend it. So I won't go in with a winged liner today. So you can see the difference between this eye with a little bit, just a little bit of eyeliner and this one. We'll go ahead and even those out. Okay, while I was finishing off this other eye, I finally looked at the Dior site to see what they had done with it. I don't know why I never looked, but they really had the color all the way up. So let's try adding a little bit more. It's working better than a brush to just apply it like this. So again, if you really wanna like this palette, or if you have it and you're trying to figure out how to use it, I think you might wanna try uh, applying it like this. I'm taking that deeper shade and I'm just going to apply it like this. This brush seems to work well too, something dense, like a sponge, or like this kind of a brush. So there it is, a little bit more vibrant. They did say to use this gold up under the brow. I don't usually put highlight under my brow bone, but let's, we can try it just for fun. We're already here. Yeah, it's too sparkly for me. I just, not my thing. So yeah, I would probably skip that step, but always fun to try. I don't even have mascara on the bottom lashes, which is something I typically do. So let's go and do that now. So I've got the Chantecai. I love this one for bottom lashes. Then I'm just taking the Coralie shade and I'm going right underneath here. So here is the final look. I went really easy on eyeliner. I didn't even put eyeliner in the waterline, which is something I typically do. Just one coat of mascara, really light, even on the eyeliner above. I kind of wanted to see what it could do in terms of going all the way up. And it does really just blend beautifully into each other. So I think I said it, an ombre look. And using my fingertips as well as that sponge applicator seemed to do the job. The only thing I used a brush for was for the inner corner and then right below. I was expecting the first palette to behave like every other Dior palette I've been trying, which has been really easy to use. Color payoff is quick. This one is not, I thought maybe the intent was different. And some of you had mentioned it was geared towards the Asian market, which is a different aesthetic. So I thought maybe they're going for a sheer color, but then I read about it. It says a highly concentrated texture for intense color impact on application. Okay, so I do see that it's highly concentrated in its texture because it's really dense. And that's why it was really hard to pick up the color. Harder to pick up the deeper color than the first one. The first one was okay. But then it says intense color impact on application, which is not the case. It's very sheer going on and there's nothing wrong with that, but I think they should have said it was a sheer color because then we would have expected it. Actually, if we had read it, we would have expected it and I didn't read it until now. And I did think that they did blend nicely into each other. So if I were going to choose one, it would be this one versus the, the first one. Then for this, I added it just for a little highlighter here. It worked fine on top of powder in case you were wondering, but for me, that one's still a pass. And then for the lipstick, again, this is for, I think, people who have lighter complexions, maybe a little bit more cool than me. And if you have pigment on your lips like me, 
it will show through. So if you do want to put a lip liner underneath, you can do that. I tried it. I used the Patrick Ta one. She's humble. Um, but it kind of takes away the effect of a sheer lip color though. So, so I think the eyeshadow palettes are more broad in terms of who they'll work on, but the lip and the cheek products are not. I think it's very limited. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.